Hello beautiful soul, I am so glad you're here. I have a beautiful shawl pattern to show you today. So this shawl pattern is called Nuverandi by Tatha Lorenzen, and it's an Icelandic word that means current or present. And since this stitch pattern has rippling icy waves, it makes me think of a current like in a raging river or a churning ocean. Soothing rhythmic stitch pattern is a beautiful reminder to live in the present moment and not worry so much about the past or the future. I love the quote by Lao Tzu, nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. So as you stitch this, let it be a reminder that things are as they're meant to be in this moment, and you can rest in that. Everything about this pattern is magnificent. The length is epic, the stitch pattern is absolutely stunning, and the colors are to die for. Because the length is so incredible, you can wrap it around many times, you can wear it so many different ways, but if you do prefer a shorter length, there are instructions in the pattern for that for you. And about these absolutely beautiful waves, I know they're so gorgeous, so stunning, but they're actually repeating, quite easy to memorize and simple, so it's perfect for the adventurous beginner. And to mimic the look of powerful, frothy ocean waves, we used our icy and rooted colors in our luxurious cash silk sock yarn. Cashmere yarn is buttery and soft and it drapes perfectly for shawls like this. If you would love to download this pattern, head to expressionfiberarts.com and of course we're going to put the direct links in the description box for you. And while you're there on the site, go ahead and sign up for our email newsletter for a free weekly knit and crochet pattern. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into this beautiful pattern. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start by chaining 16. You're going to have a lot more for the actual shawl. I just wanted to show you the stitch repeat. And of course, all the details are in the pattern for you. 15, 16. Now for row one, you're going to skip that very first chain and you're going to work a single crochet into the second chain and into each chain across. So you should end up with the number of single crochets that is one less than however many you chained. So I'm going to end up with 15 single crochets. For row two, we're going to start with a chain one and turn. And we're going to work one half double crochet into each stitch across. So nice and easy row. And you want to make sure at the end of every row that you count your stitches so that your shawl is staying a rectangle. So go ahead and finish up your row and again count your stitches. Make sure you have the same number of half double crochets as you had single crochets in the row below. Now we're on to row three, so you're going to start with a chain one and turn, and you're going to single crochet into that very first stitch. Now you're going to chain one, skip one, so skip that next stitch, and work a half double crochet into the next stitch. Then chain one, skip one, and work a double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, and work a triple crochet or treble crochet into the next one. Do that again. Chain one, skip one, and work a triple crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, work a double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, work a half double crochet into the next stitch. And then chain one, skip one, and work a single crochet into the next stitch. And you're gonna continue repeating that across your row, and this row is actually forming the bottom half of our waves. For row four, you're gonna chain one and turn, and you're gonna single crochet into that very first single crochet. Then you're gonna chain one, and you're gonna skip this next chain right here, and you're gonna half double crochet into that next half double crochet. Then chain one, skip this chain, and double crochet into the double crochet. Chain one, skip the chain, and triple crochet into the triple crochet. And you're gonna do that again. Chain one, skip the chain, triple crochet into the triple crochet. Chain one, skip the chain, double crochet in the next double crochet. Chain one, skip the chain, half double crochet into the next half double crochet. 
and then chain one, skip one, and you're gonna work a single crochet into the final stitch when you do reach the end. So this row actually is forming the top half of our waves. For row five, you're gonna chain one and turn, and you're just gonna work a half double crochet into each stitch and chain one space across. So again, it's super important when you get to the end of your row, make sure that you count your stitches and you should have the same number of stitches that you had on these previous rows down here. Make sure to work that final stitch in that, in that final edge stitch, give your stitches a count and you're all set up for the next row. So now I've gone ahead and cut this color. So I'm just gonna pull it through to finish it off and we're gonna switch to color B. So go ahead and turn, grab your second color, and we're gonna do some really fun stitches. It's called a third loop half double crochet. Now I've picked up color B, and normally you would insert your hook here when you're picking up a stitch or working any stitches, but we're gonna do third loop half double crochets. So we're not gonna work into these two top legs of the stitch. We're gonna work down here into this next one right here. So to pick up our yarn, we're gonna insert our hook into this little part here. Grab your yarn, go ahead and pull it up. So we've now attached our yarn and we're gonna start with a chain two. So this does count as your first third loop half double crochet and we're gonna be working these all down our row. So go ahead and you're just gonna work half double crochets into this little loop here on the back side of our half double crochets. So make sure you see those two top loops, turn, and this little bar right underneath is what you're working into. So work your half double crochet into that. Let me show you again, over here on the next one, not those two top legs, but this little bar right next to it, sort of right under those top legs. You're gonna work into that. So this is a third loop half double crochet. And the reason we're doing this is it adds a nice little ridge to our stitch pattern. And when I get done, I will show you what it looks like on the other side. So you can see what a fun little stitch it makes. So continue all the way down, working a third loop half double crochet into each stitch across on your row. So when you get to the end, if that final one is a little tricky to see, just make sure you find those two top legs and then look right underneath and you'll see that little third bar that you can work into. Now let me show you what it looks like on the front. You can see, if you've done it correctly, you're gonna have these little V stitches of your previous stitches from the row below. And it creates a nice little ridged texture. For row seven, we're gonna start with the chain four, three and four. And this does count as your first triple crochet plus a chain one. Remember to turn and we're gonna work in both loops across. So just normal stitches. We're not doing those third loop half double crochets on this row. So we're gonna skip this next stitch. So you're skipping that first one and the next one actually. And you're gonna double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, and half double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, and single crochet into the next stitch. And you're gonna repeat that. Chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, work a half double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, work a double crochet into the next stitch. And continue repeating that across your row. When you get down to the end, chain one, skip one, and you're gonna work a triple crochet into that final stitch. For row eight, we're gonna start with a chain four, two, three, and four, and this does count as your first triple crochet and a chain one. Make sure you're that you turn and you're gonna skip this first chain and you're gonna work a double crochet into the next double crochet. Then you're gonna chain one and skip the next chain and work a half double crochet into this next half double crochet. Chain one, skip one, work a single crochet into the next single crochet. Chain one, skip one, work a single crochet into the single crochet. Chain one, skip one, work a half double crochet into the next half double crochet. Chain one, skip one, work a double crochet into the next double crochet. Continue repeating down your row, finish with a chain one and then a triple crochet into the last stitch. And remember, this was a chain four over here, so count up one, two, three because those first three stitches are counting as your triple crochet. 
So work your triple crochet into that final edge stitch like so. For row nine, you're gonna chain one and turn, and you're just gonna work a half double crochet into each stitch and chain one space all the way across your row. Remembering again, when you get to the end, it's very important that you count your stitches. I know a common problem in crochet is to end up with triangles instead of rectangles. So count your stitches every row and you will be golden. And when you get down to the end, remember this chain four counted as a triple crochet and a chain one space. So make sure you work a half double crochet into the chain one space equivalent, and then also into that third chain. And you should have the right number of stitches. So row 10 is basically the same as row six. You're just gonna switch colors and work that third loop half double crochet across your row. So you can see down here with this first color, we've got our rows increasing like this, woo, and back down. And then it's gonna be the opposite for your other color. The wider part of your waves is gonna be opposite the wide part of this wave. So you're starting bigger, woo, and going smaller, and then getting bigger again. Then you're gonna repeat those rows throughout your shawl, and if you like, you can complete the look with a single crochet border around the edges. And that is how you make this sea-inspired shawl. And I hope that you remember it's okay to rest in this moment without being consumed by worry of the future. You've made it this far, and this very moment is beautiful. Have a wonderful week, my friend, and I will see you next week with another new pattern. Bye-bye.